Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Sugar Mama's Fireplay podcast. I am financial planner, Canna Campbell. Now, if you are listening to this podcast on Apple, please know that there is the option if you want to switch across to Spotify and you can actually watch this podcast. That's right. You can actually watch me talking directly to you. I trialed this out a couple of weeks ago with my 2023 goals, habits, Uh, podcast where I share with you what I'm doing differently, what my goals are, and what I'm really going to just slay in 2023. It was in video format. And I received so many beautiful, kind DMs on Instagram saying how much you love this format, you love being able to watch me, and to please keep it going. So I listened and I am delivering. So you've got more options, more choice. If you enjoy just listening to me, that's great. Keep listening to whatever you want on whichever podcast platform you prefer. But if you would actually like to watch me and you find it more engaging, please switch across to Spotify and listen to this podcast. Or you can simply watch me on YouTube where I'll also make this podcast available. All right. Okay. So today I want to talk to you about my... 21 day Gabby Bernstein manifesting challenge that I literally just finished over the weekend. Now, I know that this is a slight detour from my usual financial content where I talk about investing, budgeting, retirement planning. But I have to say the reason why I wanted to talk about this this course that I just did is because I think it's valuable. I think it's of great interest and I think it's a very, very powerful. When you combine this money mindset manifestation work, the you know with the practical, proactive, intelligent, informed, educated decisions around funny, finance and money and and building wealth and getting on top and, and control of your financial journey, the results are powerful. They're incredible. They're, even I would go as far as saying they're transformational. So yes, you, when you combine you know, compounding interest, budgeting, self-discipline, smart, intelligent financial goals, taxes, laws, legal loopholes in the taxes, the stuff that you need to know and should know and understand and know when is the best time to apply in your life, such as, you know, investing, such as smart, intelligent, boring to invest gearing, such as beefing up your superannuation, such as paying off your home loan. When you combine these two elements, stuff happens, like the breakthroughs happen. Uh, And not only does stuff happen that's quite incredible, you add an element of fun and even magic into your financial journey. But it will only happen if you want it to happen. Now, for the record, there is no doubt that I would be where I am today, financially, relationship-wise, and spiritually, if it wasn't for combining the hardcore discipline, sacrifice, practical steps, intelligence steps around finance and wealth creation with the money mindset and the money affirmation uh, manifestation work. There is no doubt about it. I would also like to point out that whilst a lot of people find this stuff way kumbaya and just basic baloney, a lot of people actually do this type of work without even actually realizing it. If I talk to Tom about manifesting work, he rolls his eyes and just goes, oh, here we go. What are you going to manifest? But the reality is, is Tom actually does this work himself. And so do a lot of professionals. Think about sports players. Uh, legal professionals, barristers that are in court in front of judges and juries. Uh, Think about actors. They sit, a a lot of them do this. They will sit there and actually visualize kicking that goal, standing on the podium, accepting the trophy and shaking the champagne over everyone. Uh, A barrister will practice and visualize in their head being in court, convincing a jury, talking to a judge, connecting to a judge, handling any, you know, objection, making sure that they, you know, handle themselves with dignity, with grace, they are informed. You know, a a, a Formula One car driver will imagine handling a curve or handling a, a, a problem with the engine, you know, intelligently, 
with with a calm, rational mindset. Uh, we are so a lot of you know people at the top of their game actually do this stuff anyway, whether they're open or closed to this type of manifestation. I guess spiritual work, if you want to call it, but they don't call it spiritual work or look at it as spiritual work. They look at it as a practical work. And for the record, whilst Tom might roll his eyes at me when I talk about manifesting work, he also knows to respect it because he actually knows it works. Whenever I've done Manifesting March, he'll laugh at me because he likes to do that. He loves to like get under my skin and, and give me a hard time just because he likes to watch me bite. And of course, I am like, he, I, he gets me every time I snap at him and growl at him. He's like, oh, I got you. He will actually even say, after he rolls his eyes, he's all right, okay, all right, go ahead and go manifest that because he knows it actually works. Uh, let me share this quickly with you. For 2023, I really want to manifest a holiday, an international holiday. And I said that to Tom. He's like, Hannah, why? We've just bought a house. We're trying to work out how to renovate it and a few other challenges along the way. There's not going to be any spare money for an international holiday, especially with the increased cost of airfares and accommodation and, and everything else. Like, that's just not going to happen. Take it off the list. I said, no, Tom, I'm going to manifest it. It's going to happen. And he turned around and goes, all right, okay, you, you, you okay, do it. And I, I know deep down is whilst it, it's his own, I guess, protection mechanism because he doesn't want to get disappointed or hurt or think I've let him down or, or failed, which he never really would, but he doesn't, he's a bit scared of that. But he, he it was like, okay, fine. And he hasn't hustled, hustled or hustled me about it since. And stuff's starting to happen. So that's, for the record, uh, you will know if this stuff works for 2023 if you see me on an international flight going somewhere with my family. So this podcast, I have broken down into five parts, okay? So if you want to skip, go back, go forward, you know where to find the parts. So the first part is why I decided to do this challenge. And I'm going to share with you some really personal, intimate stuff that actually makes me feel a bit scary and vulnerable. I'm going to share with you what I learned from doing this. I'm also going to share with you what I did not like from doing this challenge. And I think that's really important because I want to give you a really fair, transparent, rundown review of this challenge, this manifesting challenge. I'm also going to share with you the results, the cold hard results, the tangible results and the non-tangible results. And I'm also going to share with you whether I recommend this and how I would recommend you do this even slightly differently. Because I want to make sure if you do this, you get the best results, the maximum results from doing this. Because I know for some people who are sitting on the fence with this and they decide to do it, I want to make sure that you go in armed with all the right knowledge um, so that you can make the most. Now, first of all, I should start explaining what is the Gabby Bernstein 21 Day Manifesting Challenge? Well, it's really simple. It's really quite actually basic. Um, it is daily exercises which take between five to 15 minutes, ranging from visualization, meditation, affirmations, um, even like prayers. Um, and they're very easy to do. You just literally sit back, relax, and it's Gabby Bernstein guides you. It's great. And uh, it doesn't, so I do it early in the morning, walking the dogs, and then come back and do a little bit of journaling afterwards because there's, there's a workbook behind it. But that is essentially it. You tick it off, done. Now, why did I decide to do this? This is probably the most important thing that I want to share with you in this podcast. And as I said, I'm a little scared about sharing this with you because you may judge me. And that is, I've actually been manifesting and doing this work since I was a little girl. I can't even remember how young I was when I started doing this stuff. So much so that I would get absorbed in this work. And I even to the point, I got myself to a point where I actually believed I was a witch yeah, um, I was very little, okay, and I would create and build these things and get myself into these another world almost, where I I created these imaginary imaginary family members to help guide me uh, through challenges, even traumas, um, uh, to help create beautiful things in my life and happy things and peaceful things in my life. So for me, and it's only since doing this program, I realized, wow, I cannot remember when I did not do this as a little girl. Even as I got older, I would do it to like create things like letting my parents let me go to a party or let me stay the night at a friend's house. I would imagine like calling my mom and dad and saying, hey, um, can I please, please, please stay the night at such and such's house? And them going, okay, all right. Or going, saying, oh, do you reckon you could please drop me off at this party? I really want to go. My friends are going, and, yeah, um, you know, 
I, I would visualize that stuff. Um, so it, and, and it, it would happen, I, it would work 90% of the time. Now I've also manif done more and more manifesting probably over the last eight, nine years. I manifested my relationship with Tom and I'm going to talk about this in more detail in this podcast. I manifested this house that I am living in, recording from right now. I manifested the house of my dreams. And there is no way, if you took me back to this date last year in 2022, if someone said to me, you're going to be doing buying this house and living in this house, there I'd be like, how? What are you talking about? You've got rocks in your head. But I did some work and I haven't shared this podcast yet. It's coming. But I had to do a lot of soul searching about this and seriously, magic happened. And there's a big story behind this and a big podcast. It is coming. I just can't release this information quite yet. I manifested my children, my babies. I manifested giving birth to my children. That's something I should also point out. A lot of people who are pregnant, they actually do visualization or, or, and it's recommended that they do visualization around their work, particularly having a, if they really want to calm birth, you know, they do a lot of visualization. So again, it's, this is stuff that's even in medical fields. Um, so there, there, I've been doing manifesting work and it, but there's also something I want to share with you about this manifesting work is I, I actually have a very bad self-sabotaging habit in my manifestation work. I'm very scared of my own powers of manifestation. And I know this sounds really silly and you're like, can I, you're sugar mama. Like you don't need to be doing stuff like self-sabotaging and being scared of your own knowledge and power. That sounds ridiculous, but it's the truth. And again, I will share this in this, in this future podcast, but I'm afraid of my own manifesting power. I'm, I feel like I'm not worthy of it. I'm a little bit ashamed of it, embarrassed about it. And as I said, I have this self-sabotaging element. So I thought if I do this course, this will be really good for me because I can start exploring this. I can understand why I do this and I can stop it. I can learn to use my manifesting power for greater good, for greater value, for greater service. I can maybe learn some even better manifesting techniques. I can learn some different, different habits and uh, understand more and go down my own journey of self-discovery and also work around these silly issues that I have built over time. A lot of them which are boiled down to trust and self-worth, which all obviously stem from fear. And I know that sounds obvious probably to a lot of people listening to this, but it wasn't obvious to me. So essentially I wanted to understand more about what I do and what I, why do I do it intuitively and learn about the techniques to use and what other additional techniques I can add to my own practice. And as I said, how to fix my toxic habits and my self-destructive habits because they they don't serve any value to me. They don't help me in my life and I don't need that anymore. And I can safely say I'm letting go of all those from doing this. So I thought to myself, you know what, give this a go. You've got, test it out, see how it goes. You've got nothing to lose and so much to gain and just go in with an open head, heart and mind. And I did. All right, so this is what I learned. I learned a lot. I learned to surrender. Now, I am someone who can be a little bit of a control freak, um, sometimes even a little bit of an aggressive control freak when it comes to my own individual personal financial journey and my own manifestation work. I can really fight hard for something. And this is not a good thing uh, because when you learn to surrender and you choose to surrender, you kind of hand over your path for a little bit to the universe. And the universe then chooses and delivers what is actually better for you because the universe knows what's better for you. Now I wanna share with you a very personal example. Before I met Tom, I was kind of in this relationship and I really, really liked this guy, but he was stuffing me around, playing games, one foot in the door, one foot out, it, it was it was pulling my hair out and I did all this really, really hardcore, aggressive manifestation work. And I was I became really fragile, I became a bit of a mess. I was up and down whether I'd hear from him or not. And I got to a point where I was like, just let it go. And it was like someone it was like the universe was like, let it go, just stop. Just stop what you're doing. This is sending you crazy. Just let go. And I surrendered to the universe. And 
just went, okay, fine, like, stuff it. I just give up. Like, I, I wasn't giving, I was just like, all right, just, just let it go. And within a couple of weeks, I met Tom. And Tom was everything but more that I had on my list of what I was trying to manifest. Within, even just connecting, we met it online through Happen, even our DMs were immediate laughter. They were immediate connection. When we spoke on the phone, we spoke for like, I think like 45 minutes, an hour, and we laughed the whole time. And we met for brunch, uh, we met for breakfast a week later. And again, we laughed nonstop. I immediately felt at ease with him. I felt incredibly comfortable. And I remember walking away going from our first date where we met in person thinking, I really like this guy. He was really nice. We laughed so much and um, he was great. He's, and he's a nice guy. And I was like, wow. Like, and I thought to myself, the worst case from this, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna be friends with this guy. Uh, you know, even if it doesn't work romantically or sexually, uh, I'm going to be friends with this guy. And I, like, I was just, I was just at ease. I just let go of everything. And uh, within a week of that breakfast meeting, Tom was on my doorstep going, I really like you. I think we've got something here. I w let's, get, let's get off all these apps and just give this the best opportunity to see what happens. And even he was surrendering to the process, handing over the reins to the universe and just seeing what happens. And here we are, we'll celebrate our seven year anniversary in uh, this, on the 2nd of April this year. And we have, we both have achieved and gone through as well, so much stuff, a lot of great stuff, a lot of really heavy, hard stuff as well. Uh, so yeah, and he, he, both of us surrendered and we just let go and we have children, we have homes, uh, we have dogs, we have this, we've built a beautiful life together and we both surrendered and Tom had gone through a very similar journey to me, um, you know, with, with, with trusting people and moving on and letting go and building his own faith again. I also learned, talking of faith, how to find some faith again, something that I was really lacking. I was really needing in my life and I learned to trust, learned to trust that there is a plan and sometimes we can't always control that plan. Sometimes there are stages in our journeys where we need to let go, surrender, and but know that there is, have faith, hold that faith, that there is a plan and that it is always working. Just because nothing is happening in your life doesn't mean there's nothing going on. Sometimes the quietest moments in my life where I have nothing is actually when something big is boiling in the background, like a cooking, uh, like a melting pot, you know, it's, it's bubbling away and then all of a sudden, whoosh, that meal is ready for you to be eaten. And this is something that was, I, I learned to find that faith again um, and find that faith that you are always being guided. You just need to look for the signs, open yourself up to the signs. And this is again, this is Tom, he's, he's big on signs. Um, and when I share this podcast about our home, I'm going to share with you a profound sign that in the moment I recorded, because I recorded this incredible, credible sign. I was like, all right, I'm going to tell everyone this story about what we have just gone through with the house of our dreams and have a couple of things that were going on in the background and show them this sign because it's, it is like electrifying. It's quite incredible. Another thing I learned from doing this challenge is I learned to be more present. I learned to allow more joy into my life. I learned to slow down. Um, I am someone who's always running around like a headless chicken. I'm late for everything. I, um, I'm, always running from my goals to the next goal. I'm running uh, to see friends. I'm running to pick my kids up. I'm running with my kids. I'm running social life. I'm running. It's just, I'm just uh, I, I, a hot mess sometimes. So I've learned to slow down, to space things out, which is funny because my mantra, if you listen to my podcast about 2023 goals, resolutions and habits, I talk about my two, two keyword mantra, which is my anchor, and that is space and simplicity. And this has helped me find that. I have learned to be part of the flow. I have learned um, that we are part of the flow. And, um, we are not disconnected from the flow. I always say like I'm in the flow and I'm in the zone. No, I'm not, I'm part of it. And I have done a YouTube vlog, which explains this in more detail. So you can actually, if you're enjoying listening to this podcast, make sure you go and click on the link in the podcast notes, because that will take you to my YouTube video where you can actually watch me go through this transformation and watch things that 
freakishly things that happen along along the way. And I should point out when I talk about being more present, I have found that I with my kids, I'm not just like drawing pictures with them or, you know, uh, handing them a toy to play with or I'm actually getting down more on the ground playing with them and actually laughing with them more um, and feeling way, way, way more connected to them than I've ever felt with before. Last night, Apple was just so over, was so tired. She was just um, beside herself. And I had, I think I'd been going for like 40 minutes and trying to calm her down. And I've got two other kids that, to try and look after as well. So it was, it, and Tom was away in Melbourne. I was, a, it was hard. It was really hard. And I would normally sort of get really annoyed and frustrated. I'd get to a point where I'd snap and just, just go, oh my God, just get into bed and go to sleep. And I didn't, I was able to just keep going. I was able to hold the space for so much longer and be feeling a lot more present to her. Um, and all of a sudden she let off this massive fart <laughs> and we both like burst out laughing together. Like it was hysterical, it was a huge, obviously a comic relief, but I just felt so much co more connected to her. And it gave me that injection I needed to keep going to hold the space again as she stepped back into her like meltdown and trauma, uh, not trauma, a meltdown and tantrum. Um, so, and I found like I'm laughing with my kids and playing with them more. I'm laughing with Tom. I am, when I have one-on-one -on -one time with Tom, I feel like I'm listening more. Um, so that's been really a really beautiful benefit that's come from doing this. I've also learned this really important word, and this could be my mantra in addition to space and simplicity, and that is all better. See, Gabby does this beautiful thing, this visualization work for you. And uh, she talks about like what you want to manifest and if you, and this is great for people who are, I feel a bit stuck in what they want to manifest or feel like they're lacking imagination, you can almost go or, or, or even better or what I've switched mine to way better. So this was great with dealing with my self-imposed limitations where I'd go, okay, well, I just want to manifest um, earning this much money per year. And I, I've spoken about this on the podcast where I felt like I could only earn, a, I was only worthy of earning a certain amount of income per year. And when I worked through that, I broke through that boundary. So she says, or better, which I think is, that, that word is just like, just breaks through the glass ceiling and knows that it reminds us that we live in a limitless, abundant and a prosperous world. There are no caps. There's no limit to how much money you can earn. There's no limit to how much wealth you can build. There's no limit to how much money you can have in your savings account or your investment portfolio. We live in a limitless, abundant, prosperous universe. So that key, those key words, or better, or if you like mine, way or way better um, it just kind of feels like you're breaking through any boundaries limitations or anything energy that's maybe holding you back in your life and when I did I built my vision board and you can see this in the vlog and I'm actually going to go back and put the words or uh, or way better because I you know maybe why limit myself to maybe manifesting one holiday maybe I should like you, I can maybe potentially if I open and surrender to the universe, I might be able to manifest two holidays. Don't just stop at one. You, you, and that's not to be greedy or anything like that, but it's just to kind of open yourself up. In fact, there might be something even better that the universe has in mind and just having that faith that it is better. So that was really uh, very, very important for me to go through personally. It also heightened my sense of direction, purpose, and passion. I have never felt more electric with my levels of motivation, direction, clarity, and purpose. I feel like this, to me, is the start of something really big in my life. This has opened up a new path, a new journey, a new adventure. And this is um, a lot of signs that have happened and things that happened during this process, this 21 day period, have really come to fruition. Yeah, I have seen results. I've seen lots of results and I'm gonna share a lot of them with you in this podcast. Now, I now want to take you on to what I did not like about this process, what I did not like about the 21 day manifesting course. And this is where I will come back to the, my inner financial planner, my financial planning cap back on. I didn't like the immediate upsell. The moment you finish the course, you got an email saying you can do this course now. And it wasn't particularly expensive. Um, in fact, she gives you a discount because you've already done the course. But I feel like I'm stuck in a click funnel now because I'm getting lots of emails about this course and there's a hard sell and I doesn't, I, I understand that's business is to send an email and encourage people to, to sign up to do this program or this workshop or this course, but it was so immediate. And I, I was like, hang on, I just, can I just sit and enjoy what I, or the process of this manifesting period? And 
I'm, I'm going to share something with you which I it sits very, in a very uncomfortable way. It was not reflective of Gabby Bernstein. Um, I also found that the desire statement is not in the present moment. I'm big on doing any language or affirmations or visualization in the present moment because if you have a goal and you say i am going to pay off my debt that saying in itself reminds you that you are not debt free and it, it can you can subconsciously manifest always chasing that goal you're like i am going to do this whereas if you say you reword that and say i'm in the process of paying off my debts my debts are coming down that is putting you in the present moment is far more empowering and it actually symbolizes and triggers current immediate action that is in positive alignment with your goals i am paying off my debts i am on the debt-free journey you are in it it makes you accountable it makes you empowered it makes you step up and it makes you do the work even if it means transferring one dollar towards your credit card debt you can you're in you are not in sorry correction you are part of the flow and you are moving with that flow and you can build that momentum i feel like a lot of her, the, a lot it's not locked some of it was uh, my desire statement is to manifest. Okay, that's great, but that's future. So for me, I, I didn't do that. And I, and I would rather say I am manifesting or I am doing the work. I am doing this. I am achieving this. I am creating this. I am seeing this unfold in my life right in this very moment. So that's I'm big on that because I feel like there's a lot of people who keep pushing their goals and dreams into the future and never wonder why they never see results. So for me, if you're doing this and you agree with this, make sure you really watch your language and make sure it's in the present moment and positive. Never use the word can't, no, but, because the words can't can't break that down. They don't interpret that. So if you say, I um, don't want to be in debt, your brain will process the words, I want to be in debt, and it will actually create that in your life. Whereas you go, if you turn it into the positive, go, I am... I am working on being debt free, totally different language, totally different mindset, totally different actions that will flow from that. Uh, the next thing is, is actions. There's not, there's a lot of mindset stuff here, a lot of manifestation, but I felt like it was, it's, it's got some stuff on actions, but I felt like it didn't have enough on actions. There is only one day, which is day five, which is talking about doing, taking one small action in positive alignment to your goals, which is great. That's great, but one day out of 21 days, that's not enough. I try and do at least one thing every day for at least one of my goals. And it might be something small, like, uh, you know, tr going to the gym for an extra three minutes to get a little bit fitter if that's one of my goals, or um, uh, it, it, just do one simple thing or transfer $1 towards my mortgages because paying off my mortgages, it, helping pay off our mortgage is one of our financial goals that we are working on right now. So I really, I felt like it needs more action. And that's, yes, I'm going to be admit, that is the practical, hardcore financial planner within me. And this is what I want to explain about what I what makes me nervous around this stuff? And I'm, I'm sure if there's financial planners listening to this, they'll, they'll hear me go, yep, I know what Kenna's talking about. So as a financial planner, quite often people come and see me, you know, would say, look, I've got, um, I need to get ahead financially. I feel like I'm treading water. I need to, to do this and do that. There are a lot of people that also have come to see me that I have, and I, I'm going to use an example. I had this lady who came and saw me and she was in her early 50s she was a single mother with a child and she for the first part of the meeting she basically told me how great she is at manifestation she's like I'm really good at manifesting whenever I need money I manifest it it turns up in my life and I'm always I'm so I'm always protected I'm always guided and, and I'm like okay wow oh my gosh this woman's really powerful like this is cool like oh my god I'm listening like I'm thinking I'm gonna learn something here and then we got to the the reality of her finances and they were a mess she had two thousand dollars to her name she was renting and there's nothing wrong with renting at all she had no emergency money whatsoever i can't remember if she had debt or not i have a feeling she did and she had all these amazing beautiful goals that she wanted to achieve but she was living up in a cloud and i had to bring her back down to earth not in a mean nasty patronizing way but i was like I had to help her see the reality of a situation and she also had no superannuation whatsoever absolutely none 
and she was working, I think, two or three days a week. And as a financial planner, we often have to pick up the pieces and clean up the mess from people who have been living in cloud cuckoo land, burying their head in the sand, being incredibly naive about financial well-being. And she was in her early 50s and she, yes, she had $2,000. That's good. It's better than nothing. But there was a lot of valuable time that she could have been doing other things, practical things, where she had financial goals. She set up savings plans, started to invest, started paying attention to a superannuation that would have made her in a profoundly different space. And it was a very hard conversation to have with her. And yes, she finally got it. And she, she understood and I, you know, what I was talking about. And she we, between us, we came up with some great side hustles for her to earn some extra cash on the side. You know, I explained to her what savings are, what emergency savings are. You know, it was, it was an educational session, not, not financial advice in any capacity. But like so many times I sit there listening to people going, you're in a bit of a mess. Like you really are living, as I say, in cloud cuckoo land. You need to fix your finances. And that's why I worry about not this course at all, but I do worry about some of this work. They kind of create this false sense of abundance without the necessary steps, actions, goals, sacrifices, discipline, hard work, on top of amazing, powerful manifestation, goal work, dream work, visualization, abundance, prosperity. That's, I, I just, that's, and that's the financial, and I, if you're a financial planner listening to this and you go, yep, I know exactly what Kenneth's talking about. I've had many appointment with people like this. Please shoot me through DM because I feel a bit scared sharing that with you as well. And I have to say, I actually, another lady I saw came and saw me and she was drowning in debt. She had no money, no cash, no emergency money. Uh, she actually even lived at home with her mother. And she was in this clickbait tunnel where she was being sold course after course after course. Now she wasn't going to Gabby Bernstein's courses. She was doing something on another level, but these courses were like $2,000, $10,000, $15,000, $20,000. And she had to buy all these stuff. And she was in basically a pyramid marketing scheme, but she wasn't, she was just the, basically a victim in this. And so whenever she'd have money, it would go towards the next course. And she was in this addiction phase. So again, that's why I'm a bit cautious and careful of this type of work because I've seen it burn people. I've seen it hold people back. I've seen people take them down a very dangerous path. I've seen it take people down a, 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 a very naive, head in the sand path where they're losing, wasting valuable, precious time. That doesn't mean I don't like it. I do. I think, as I said, I clearly there's nowhere I'd reason. I, I would not be where I am today if it wasn't for this, the elements of this type of work. So that is what I didn't like about it. But did I have results? You better believe I had results. I had great results. And I feel like I haven't even cracked the surface of these results. All right. So a couple of tangible things. Because I know people listening to this will be like, I want to hear the results, Kenna. Sugar Mama's going to give you her results now. Results. So our podcast, one of the things I really wanted to manifest is, and I had this in my 2023 um, list, is like my second podcast, which is called How Do They Afford That? What I do with the loveliest Michael Thompson from Fear and Greed. And I was to see, like, see where this goes. It's doing really well. Like, so like kind of surrender the universe as to what's supposed to be happening with this journey with Fear and Greed and How Do They Afford That? I get off the plane from the Gold Coast and I turn my phone on as we land. And there's a message from Michael saying, uh, Canna, um, Apple Podcast have just rated us number three in the world across all educational podcasts. Look at this. And I look at the screenshot. There's Mel Robbins, number one. Number two, Jordan Peterson. Number three, how do you afford that? Now, our podcast is still very new. Um, it has been going for six or seven months and we are number three in the world. And I was like, I was like looking at this going, uh, is this a joke? And then I was like, am I, hang on, I'm getting, I'm going cross-eyed here. This doesn't make sense. No, no, no. How could that be? It's such a new podcast. And look, and Mel Robbins is unbelievable. Jordan Peterson is phenomenal. Like how are we keeping up with them? We're in their company. We're in their zone. We, we are part of the zone and we're part of the flow with them. And uh, I was like, holy crap. Uh, I couldn't believe it. Anyway, um, a week later, I get another message from Michael. 
hi Kata. Uh, we're number two. I'm like, and I, another screenshot. I'm like, oh my God, we are Bill Robbins. How do they afford that? Jordan Peterson. And he actually wrote me a DM. He's like, you know what? Uh, I think we could be number one if we keep going. So who knows what happened? But I mean, I'm incredibly grateful for even being in, I would have been happy with top 50, to be honest, but or better or way better is number one, two or three. I it, absolutely phenomenal. Like I just, I lost for words. Another thing that happened is at the beginning of the year, um, when I started to do my desire statement, which is part of the process, I, uh, and in my goal setting stuff, I said, I really would like to do more keynote speaking. It's something I've done a, a bit of in uh, last year, particularly towards the end of the year, but something I really enjoyed. I got a huge high from doing it and I had amazing feedback from people who've been to my, been to events where I've done keynotes. Uh, I had a flurry of inquiries and people booking me to do keynote events for their staff members, for their workshops, for their communities. Um, like it's just unbelievable already and it's not even like what are we the 22nd of January and I to the point where I've even got bookings being taken up in March uh, it, it's quite incredible like and I just sort of sat on that feeling going oh I actually really like to do this and it's already happening um, the next thing is I got a DM from a lady from a Adelaide radio station saying we're looking for someone who can help us as a financial planner to um, be as a guest on our, on our radio show to help young people. And I was like, oh, like I'm, I'm busy. I've got to be really careful with my boundaries of the time and space. And I was like, oh, look, to be honest, financial planners are really busy. We, we, there's a huge shortage in Australia of financial planners. They are drowning in work. They are drowning in paperwork. They are drowning in compliance. There aren't enough financial planners in Australia to service Australians. I, I said, you're going to have a hard time finding someone like, I'm so, sorry, I can't help. Anyway, I was having a um, powwow with my manager, who's like almost like a business partner of mine. I mentioned it to him, he's like, you didn't tell me this, what? And anyway, he said, give me her details. I need to get in touch. And anyway, he spoke to her and he's like, came back to me, he's like, Hannah, you, you really need to do this. This is an amazing opportunity. Um, you are great at speaking, you've done radio work, you, 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 you can do this, you've got to do this. And he actually explained it to me and he's like, this is an incredible opportunity, do it. So I'm going to do it. Um, the other thing that happened, and this was the, a really incredible one, I had been sitting on for a long, long time wanting to get back and doing my one-on-one -on -one sessions. I used to previously do these educational sessions with people around finance. I'd explain to people what a budget is. I explained to people how to set a financial goal. Um, it was all educational, there was no, never ever any personal advice, but I would, and I, a lot of the appointments were actually mindset coaching. I'd say, in fact, I'd say probably 85% of these appointments were mindset, where people would come to me and go, oh, like I had a, a traumatic upbringing around money, my parents fought about money, or my, one of my parents was a gambler, I, and I did a lot of almost financial counselling in these appointments, and I, I really loved doing them, but they became quite energetically draining and I, you know, I basically stopped them. Anyway, out of the blue, I had this lovely lady message me on my personal Instagram account at Canna Campbell Official. And she met, DM'd me saying, hi, like I'm really, this is really out of the blue, but I feel really compelled to write this message to you. Um, I want to pay you to help me with my money mindset and my manifestation work. I'm in a block, I'm stuck, and I need, I, f I feel like I need your guidance. And I really, I know you don't do this, but I'm just wondering and just giving it a go to see if you're actually open to doing this. Now, I had been thinking, sitting on this idea of doing some money mindset, money, uh, money ma even money manifestation coaching. And, but I was too scared to do it because I was like, no one's going to really want to hear what I have to say. Like, I'm not Gabby Bernstein. I'm not at that level. Um, I will admit I'm very good at manifestation. I'm very good at money mindset. I'm very good at the languages behind programming, programming and setting ourselves up for success. But I am like, oh, I, I felt very insecure about this. And I got this DM. I'm like, do it. Like, go and help this girl. You can help her. And even in her DM, I was like, I can see exactly the blocks that are happening here. I immediately picked it up. and was like, this is really funny, but I've actually been sitting on this idea of doing coaching. Um, yeah, I'll take you on and I'll coach you. And we have had our first session. We've got our second session in a couple of days. And already it's been quite incredible. And 
she's like you she even after our first session she's like Hannah like I you've just helped me so much figure out so much in just an hour like this is really good you need to do this um and she goes I'm so honored that you actually said yes she's like I never thought I'd even hear from you let alone you'd say yes so I was like of course I'll help you so I I am going to I'm I am launching a proper um Sugar Mama Academy around investing in programs and stuff like that but I will be offering doing special coaching and uh, programs avail also as well on my Sugar Mama platform and so that is a, I guess a new service offering that I will be making available to everyone if they're interested in having me help them guide them through certain mindset and manifestation journeys okay so a new business I guess you could say was launched within this what about non-tangible and I'd say these non-tangible probably even more valuable to me than the tangible results my mindset is way more positive and I am genuinely way more excited about life and about the future. I'm also feeling so much more relaxed and easygoing. I kind of feel like it's fine. I like, all right, that didn't happen. That's because something better is coming. I have so much more faith. I have so much more hope. I have so much more certainty. I have so much more mental strength. I feel like I'm compartmentalizing things in a better way. I also feel like I have an element of detachment, not in a naive way or a silly way, but in a surrendering way. I am laughing way more and I'm laughing a lot deeper, which is really beautiful. I am seeing more and more signs that I am on the right path and seeing more signs that I'm being guided to make sure that I stay on the right path. I don't detour or self-sabotage or self-destruct. And I'm feeling way more empowered way more empowered i feel as i said this is the start of something big something very very big in my personal journey which is huge because i feel like i've been waiting and looking for this for really quite some time and that's not to say i'm going to be doing a whole pile of spiritual work and moving away from my financial stuff hell no that stuff is really important let me remind you of those financial planning appointments where i was like oh god what's going on here um no that stuff is that is me that is my rock solid stable foundation of what i'll be talking to you about so don't worry i'll talking to you about shares and bonds and etfs and listed investment companies and superannuation and budgets and cash flow and passive income that's still me but i will take more pride and ownership of what that element of spirituality within me would i recommend it yeah i would i would recommend doing this course i think it's great you only need to be a teeny tiny bit open or you only need to go in with an open mindset and see just see it give it a go have fun with it i do recommend it and i recommend if you've done this course i recommend doing it again why do you just have to do it at the beginning of the year i'd love to do this again maybe each time the seasons change um, i'd like to do this maybe each in of each financial year or beginning of each financial year i would recommend doing this though also in combination which i think would even amplify its power is doing it in combination with some sort of cleanse so maybe if you went, okay, well, for the next 21 days, I won't touch any alcohol. Or for the next 21 days, I might, won't touch any sugar. Or for the next 21 days, I'll try and do some form of exercise each day. I think it would work beautifully in combination with something else as well. Um, I also have to say that the meditations within this program are beautiful. Incredible. I am a really fussy meditator. There's, I, there's probably just a handful of meditations that really work and get me as to be part of the flow, part of the zone, hers got me right there and quickly. They really hit the spot. Uh, if you can buy her med med uh, meditations, I, I need to go and find the money to buy them. Um, I would also recommend that you read your desire statement every day, morning and night. She doesn't actually say this in the program on, maybe she did, I just missed it, but I felt like Rereading my desired statement um, during this 21 day process was incredibly important, incredibly valuable. So I recommend morning and night. And um, uh, and yeah, I think it was great. I think it was very powerful. I think the best is yet to come from doing this. Um, but it's, as I say, you need to just be a teeny tiny bit open to give this a go. And I think if you do, you'll be blown away by what shows up in your life or what starts to show up in your life. All right enough of this from me i think you've heard enough um i've talked to you until i'm blue in the face and you're probably sick of hearing me talk about this because i can get a little bit overexcited and passionate but that's just who i am so i shouldn't apologize now next week's podcast i'm putting returning back to my normal stuff um, i'm going to be sharing an incredible podcast with alex 
who as a single mother managed to buy her first home uh, with a deposit of a pretty much $5,000. It's an incredible story about a woman who was like a dog with a bone. She desperately wanted a home. She wanted to set down some roots. She wanted to own her own home. Uh, and she found some very creative, clever ways of actually making it happen. So that is next week on Sugar Mama's Fire Play. All right, everyone, have a fantastic week ahead. Please make sure you are subscribed to this podcast channel. You are, of course, following me on Instagram at Sugar Mama TV because I give you all the immediate access sticker link tabs to make it really nice and easy to get my content the moment it goes live. And of course, if you want to delve into the more deeper personal side of my life where you can see the kids, you can see what I'm doing in my life um, and talk about in, in a safe realm more of this work, please make sure you're following me at Cara Campbell Official. I will link in the podcast notes absolutely everything you need as well as that vlog where you can watch me do this challenge over 21 days. Have a fantastic week. I'll see you next Monday. Ciao for now.